So we've now introduced the symmetric bilinear form called the killing form that takes two elements of the Lie algebra and gives us a complex number. Um, and it's defined by k of x bracket y equals trace of add x add y. We've calculated this in an example and I want to talk about uh, some of its properties in this video. So here's something we want to avoid. Suppose uh, little g is abelian, so that all the matrices in little g commute with one another. In other words, the commutator bracket vanishes. Well, in this case, add x is just the zero map for all x, because x bracket anything is zero. So that tells us the killing form will be identically zero for any pair of vectors. And that's really boring, right? We want the killing form to give us some kind of interesting dot product. Um, so we want to avoid this from happening. So here's a definition. Um, a symmetric bilinear form is called non-degenerate if for all x not equal to zero there exists a y such that uh, k x y is not zero. Okay so that's very far away from this abelian case where the killing form just vanishes. If it's non-degenerate you know, for every vector you can find something else such that k x y is non-zero. So we say that little g is semi-simple if its killing form is non-degenerate. Now this is a slightly heinous thing to say. Um, so really the definition of semi-simplicity is completely different from this. It's to do with the diagonalizability of um, elements in the Lie algebra. And it's a theorem using that definition that G is semi-simple if its killing form is non-degenerate. It's called Cartan's criterion for semi-simplicity. Um, but because uh, it's a theorem, we can actually use that as a definition if we're being devious. So just be aware, this is not really how you should define semi-simplicity, but it is an equivalent characterization of uh, semi-simplicity for the Lie algebra. So we will focus on semi-simple things in what follows. We're also going to be focusing on the Lie algebras of compact groups. And there's something special about the killing form for those. So here's a theorem that I won't prove in this video, maybe in a later video. The theorem says uh, if G is compact, then, well, the killing form is a real valued form in this case. Um, and it's actually negative semi-definite. What does that mean? It means k of x, x is less than or equal to zero for all x in the Lie algebra. And in fact, uh, k, x, x equals zero if and only if add x is zero. So in other words, if x commutes with everything in the, algebra, in the Lie algebra. So if, in other words, if x lives in what's called the center of the Lie algebra, that's the set of um, uh, x such that x bracket y equals zero for all y in the Lie algebra. So you may have come across the center of a group, the set of things that commute with everything in the group. This is the center of the Lie algebra, the set of things that commute with everything in the Lie algebra. It's not necessarily true that if your group has trivial, sorry, if your Lie algebra has, is, has trivial center, then the group has trivial center. Um, for example, take G to be SU2, then the center of the group is uh, plus or minus the identity matrix. There's a non-trivial element, namely minus the identity that commutes with everything. But the center of the Lie algebra, little su2, 
is zero. You can check. The only thing that commutes with everything in the Lie algebra is the zero matrix. And it's this latter condition we're interested in that the center of the Lie algebra is trivial. So as a consequence of this theorem, if G is compact and Z of little g equals zero, the center is zero, then little g is semi-simple because what did semi-simple mean? It meant that the killing form was non-degenerate. In other words, for every x, there's a y such that kxy equals something non-zero. Well, here, if, um, if we're compact and there's no center, then kxx is strictly less than zero unless x is actually zero. So we get non-degenerate uh, killing form. So here's uh, what will be an important remark. Uh, let T be a maximal torus in G, compact group. Remember they exist from what we said earlier. Uh, let little t be the Lie algebra uh, of, of t. Let little h be uh, little t tensor c. And little h subscript r be i times little t. We discussed this in the last video. Then um, k restricted to little h r is positive definite. because little hr consists of things of the form ix with x in little t. So k of ix ix equals, well you bring out the two factors of i, you get minus kxx. kxx is negative definite, so this is positive unless x equals zero. So another name for a positive definite symmetric bilinear form is a Euclidean inner product. So a positive, definite, symmetric bilinear form, SBF, is also called a Euclidean inner product, or dot product. And it's actually, um, in some sense, isomorphic to the usual dot product. So if we pick an orthonormal basis uh, with respect to this positive definite symmetric bilinear form, um, which I'm going to call K, uh, then the change of basis matrix is an isomorphism from k to the usual dot product. Dot from whatever the vector space is called, uh, let's say v times v to r. And so I should give the vector space a name up here as well. So in other words, really, little hr is Euclidean space with its usual Euclidean geometry. As long as the Lie group we're working with is a compact group uh, and it's semi-simple. So later we're going to be studying the geometry of root systems and there'll be a lot of Euclidean geometry coming up and this is where that Euclidean geometry is coming from. Okay, next remark. Remember that our weight diagram doesn't really live in little hr, it lives in the dual space of little hr. That's where our weights and our weight lattice live. Um, but that's going to inherit a Euclidean geometry too. So here's the remark. If um, k v times v to c is a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form, 
then v dual, the dual vector space, inherits a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form two. And that's actually the one that we're going to be calculating the 120 degree angle uh, in SU3 for. Um, okay, so how does this work? Well, first, um, there is a map, in fact, an isomorphism called sharp going from V dual to V. Uh, it's got an inverse called flat that goes from V to V dual. They're called the musical isomorphisms. And it's defined in the following way. So uh, K of alpha sharp V, right? Alpha is going to live in the dual space. Alpha sharp will live in V. Little v lives in V. So this makes sense. And this is supposed to be a complex number. This is going to be alpha evaluated on V. So if alpha is in V dual, remember you can evaluate it on vectors in V to get a complex number. Um, we can also replace C with R here if we need to. Okay, so this is the property we want this sharp map to have. Notice that I'm writing it as alpha sh sharp rather than sharp of alpha. That's just that's just what people do. Um, why does this uniquely determine the sharp map? This uniquely determines sharp uh, because k is non-degenerate. So it's going to be an exercise to see that this is true. So in general, if you have a non-degenerate uh, pairing, um, this will give you an isomorphism. So this will be an exercise. Um, so now we define uh, k star of alpha beta. So this is going to be a symmetric bilinear form on the dual space. We define this to be k of alpha sharp beta sharp. So that will be our dual symmetric bilinear form. So to make this a little bit less abstract, this sharp map and this uh, dual k star, uh, I want to see what this really means in terms of uh, matrices. So I'm going to define a matrix k i j to be k evaluated on e i e j, where e i e j, you know, this is a basis e one up to e n is a basis of v. So k of v w is k of some v i e i, some w j e j. We can bring the vi's and the wi's outside because it's bilinear and we get sum over i and j of vi wj kij because all that's left inside is ei and ej and that's how we define kij so we have a matrix that completely uh, determines our bilinear form so rather than thinking of some rather than thinking of k as some a big abstract thing, we just remember it's a matrix. You, know, you can encode it as a matrix. Now, what is the sharp map? Well, given alpha in V dual, remember we can think of alpha as a row vector, alpha one up to alpha n. We want to produce a column vector, alpha sharp one down to alpha sharp n such that what was it k alpha sharp v equals alpha of v okay well alpha of v is just the dot product of this row vector against a column vector that's alpha one v one plus dot 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 plus alpha n v n 
alpha sharp v equals um, well by this formula up here it's sum of k i j alpha sharp i v j and now we just take components on either side so the the, the uh, coefficient of v j is on the one hand alpha j and on the other hand sum k i j alpha star uh, alpha sharp i okay so that's not quite k applied to the matrix i because the i and the j are swapped but remember k is a symmetric bilinear form so this is equal to k j i alpha sharp i in other words this is the matrix k times the vector alpha sharp So to get alpha sharp, we just apply k inverse. Um, now, remember alpha j here is the, the component, the jth component of a row vector. Um, so what I actually need to do is apply k inverse to alpha transpose to get alpha sharp, to get a column vector. So you can see this only makes sense if this matrix K i j is invertible, and that's precisely the condition of non-degeneracy. The flat map, which is the inverse to the sharp map, is therefore given by the matrix K rather than K inverse, and that always makes sense. That doesn't require any non-degeneracy. Finally, what is K star? K star of alpha beta is, well again, it's going to be k star i j alpha i beta j and it's supposed to be equal to k of alpha sharp beta sharp so that is sum of k i j of alpha sharp i beta sharp j which is sum of k i j times k inverse i p alpha p and k inverse j q beta q using this formula for alpha and beta sharp and you can see this is i mean this sum is happening over all repeated indices here so basically all indices so this is actually uh you know k i j k inverse i p is really uh, the identity uh, as in it's delta jp uh, because k is sym symmetric so we can switch the i and the j and then this is really k times k inverse jp and that's the identity and then alpha p k jq inverse beta q so the delta jp just means we have to take j equal p so this is sum of alpha j beta q k inverse j q and comparing the left hand side to the right hand side we see that k star i j is just uh, k inverse i j okay so the don't worry about the indices they're all called different things but they're all dummy indices they all get summed over so it doesn't really matter the, the key thing is that k star, the dual symmetric bilinear form, has a matrix which is the inverse of k. So if we want to compute k star, we just have to compute k and then invert. So let me do an example. For SU3, remember we calculated k of H13, H13, that was 12 we calculated k of h23 h23 that was also 12 and we calculated h13 with h23 and that was 6. so i'm going to use this as my basis right so i'm interested in little hr this is two dimensional in this example and it has basis e1 equals h13 e2 equals h23 so in other words the matrix that i was called in k is 12 6 6 12 
So on the dual space, HR dual, uh, you know, K star is given by the inverse of this matrix. So that's one over the determinant, which is like one over 108, I think. Doesn't really matter. This factor isn't going to affect the angles between vectors. And then times 12, minus 6, minus 6, 12. So this is saying that the two axes, the two basis vectors in the dual space have a dot product of minus 6. So E1 dual has length 12, oh, sorry, has length root 12. E2 dual has length root 12 and E1 over the length, sorry, E1 dual over the length of E1 dual dotted with E2 dual over the length of E2 dual equals minus 6 over 12, so minus a half, and that's cos of 120 degrees. Okay, so this explains why I was writing my theta 1, theta 2 axes, uh, or rather my k and l axes, I think I was calling them, uh, at 120 degrees to one another. That's because they naturally live inside hr star, where those basis vectors really have angle 120 degrees with respect to the killing form.